As he's entering, you know, there's this excitement. Some are singing the, 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 the from, quoting from the scripture, Psalm 118, and there's, there's, it's so, it's, it's, it's a wonderful time. But you know, the crowds had a limited revelation of who Jesus was. A lot of them expected Jesus to be that military redeemer, that political redeemer. That's what, was what their expectations were. They were thinking of the five loaves and two fish that fed 5,000 men besides women and children. They were thinking of Jesus, the miracle worker. That's what they were thinking about. So they thought of him as uh, somebody who was going to redeem them and bring them to just physical prosperity. They had a limited revelation of Jesus. How do I know that? You know, some of them believed that Jesus was Messiah, probably, but a lot of them didn't. Look at the Pharisees. The Bible records in the book of Luke that the Pharisees turned to Jesus as people are celebrating and people are saying, you know, are inferring that he's Messiah. They, they said to Jesus, rebuke the disciples. Shut them up. They didn't believe it. You see that in Luke 19, 39. He said, some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd and said, teacher, rebuke your disciples. They didn't like hearing it. They did not have that revelation of Jesus. They, had, they did not know. Even though they probably knew the scriptures, they didn't have a revelation. You see, they knew the scriptures. They knew the significance of the people chanting and, and, and shouting, you know, Hosanna to the son of David. They knew the significance of that. That means he's Messiah. But they didn't believe. He said, shut them down. Shut them down. And I love what Jesus says in verse, verse 40. He says, but he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. You know why Jesus said that? Because there was a prophetic word that there will be an acknowledgement of Messiah coming into Jerusalem. So even if he, they shut everybody up, somebody had to lift up their voice. And Jesus said, even the stones would do that. Glory to God. Many people don't know who Jesus is. As he enters in the city and there's that buzz, you know, the Bible tells us that many people didn't know who he was. Matthew 21, 10 says, when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is this? They didn't know who Jesus was. They said, who is this? So in the midst of all the excitement, all the buzz, all the electricity, all the funfair, the fact that the, shake, the, the city was kind of shaken together, you know, it was shaken and, and everything. People are still asking, verse 11 said, who is this? Who is this? And verse 11 says, so the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Now, I know some of you look at this and think, oh yeah, that's what he was. Yes, but he was a lot more. It was a lot more. Remember when Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? They said, oh, some say you're Elijah. Some say you're Moses. You're Jeremiah. You're one of the prophets. But he was a lot more than that. A lot more than that. You see, many of the, of the, of the Jews, they, they, they did not know who Jesus was. And you know, many of us don't know who Jesus really is. Matthew 16, 13, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am, that I, that I, the son of man, am? Notice what he said, I, the son of man, am. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. In this case, they were saying, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. That's what they were saying. Today, some people think that Jesus is just a prophet. Folks, he was a prophet, a great prophet, but he is more than just a prophet. He's more than a great prophet. Some people think that Jesus is, is, is just a great teacher. Folks, he was a great teacher. He brought so many principles of the kingdom and how to live, lead, uh, live life. Powerful principles. But Jesus was more than a great teacher. Did you hear what I said? He was more than a great teacher. Some people saw Jesus as a miracle worker, but he was more than just a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Some people equate Jesus with Muhammad or, or, or Buddha or Confucius or any one of those folks, those religious leaders, you know, that came, have come down through history. Folks, they, Jesus is way above any one of them. Every single one of them died and is still dead. But the resurrection proves that Jesus is totally different from any religious leader that has ever lived. Hallelujah. His, resur his resurrection proves that he's more than a great prophet, a great teacher, a great miracle worker, or a great religious leader. His resurrection proves that he's the son of the living God. Now, I want to ask you this question. Do you really know who Jesus is? 
Do you know? A lot of believers know Jesus as Savior, but they don't know him as Lord. A lot of believers know Jesus as Savior. He has saved me from my sin, but they don't know him as the master of their lives. Isn't that true? They don't know him. They don't have that revelation. Why do I say they don't have that revelation? Because if they have that revelation, they will lead their lives in obedience to him. He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Do you know him? Do you know him? Who do you say that he is? How do you identify Jesus? How do you see him? Jesus is more than a prophet or a teacher or a miracle worker. The Bible says he's the son of man, but he's also the son of God. Did you hear what I said? He's Emmanuel, God with us. The Bible said that his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Bible describes Jesus in so many ways. The Bible says that Jesus is the Word of God, the Word of God made flesh. Uh, the Bible says that when he was made flesh, he came with grace. Somebody say grace. He came with truth. He was full of grace. He was full of truth. The Bible says Jesus is the light of the world. In other words, if you're in a place of darkness, he can show you the way. The Bible says he is the way. He is the truth and he is the life. The Bible says he's the door for the sheep. He's the door to heaven. He's the door to God. Somebody help me out now. This is our Jesus. He came and as the lamp of God to take away the sins of the world. He's the good shepherd who meets all our needs according to his riches in glory. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. That, that gives us an eternal hope. Glory to God. When somebody dies in the Lord, oh, folks, we should not mourn like, like some of the non-believers. No, 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 no. We are going to see them again. If you are a believer and you, and you have a loved one that has died in the Lord, you will see them again. And Jesus, the resurrection and the life, he will, be, he will raise all of us up on that day. Hallelujah. He is the faithful witness. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. That is our Jesus. My prayer today is that God will give us a revelation of the one who walked towards Jerusalem. A revelation of who he was. Because, you see, you may hear about Jesus. You may see things about Jesus. You may read things about Jesus. But if you don't have that revelation, you miss out on Jesus. The most important thing Jesus did was that he came to take away the sins of the entire world. Your sin and my sin. The sins of the entire world. You see, man being sinful had separation from God. But God being full of love wanted to bridge that gap. That chasm, so to speak. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The reason God sent Jesus was so that you would have peace with God. So that you would have peace with God. And that peace starts by you accepting him as your Lord and as, as your Savior. But it's not just peace with God in terms of salvation. That peace includes prosperity. God's heart's desire is that you prosper in all things and be in health. Even as your soul prospers. I'm not talking of the prosperity of the world. I'm not talking of the blessing of the world. The Bible says, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, but added no sorrow. Glory to God. That is full prosperity where you are prospering in everything, your marriage. You're prospering in your, your, your work at your workplace. You're prospering in, your, in everything you put your hands to. You are in good health just as your soul prospers. Your soul is, 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 is attuned to God, aligned to God. You are seeking after him. You are desiring him. You are having intimacy with him. You are having fellowship with him. Jesus said he came so that we would have peace with God. And experience the peace. So this Palm Sunday, may we not be like those who saw him and heard him, but missed him. But missed him. May we be, not be like those who, even though there was excitement, they knew what was happening in terms of their quoting from the scriptures and all that, they missed him. May we have the revelation of Hosanna. May we have the revelation of the son of David. The one who is the king of kings and, and the Lord of lords. May we have that revelation. 
I'm just going to close with this scripture, Luke 19, 42. It's the same words that Jesus said when he was approaching Jerusalem. He said, how I wish today that you would understand the way of peace. That's the heart of God. He wants you to understand the way of shalom, of irene. He wants you to understand it, to have a revelation that he's more than just a teacher, more than just a prophet, a miracle worker. He's your Savior, your Lord, your friend, your God. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He's your healer. Did you hear what I said? He's your healer. He's your provider. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for this revelation. Oh, God, open our eyes to behold this truth. Show us the way to peace the God kind of peace, to shalom, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I don't know if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but I'm going to give that opportunity right now. You may be listening online. I just want to invite you right now to make a decision for Jesus. I want you to decide right now to to, to admit to God that you're not in a place of peace. You do not know the peace of God. And if you desire to come to know the peace of God, it is not a difficult thing to do. It does require that you acknowledge that you're a sinner. It does require you acknowledge you've fallen short of God's mark. That's an easy thing to do because all of us are sinners. All of us have fallen short of the mark of God. But it then requires you to decide that you know what, you want to go have a journey with the Lord. You're going to repent from your sin. And you're going to accept him into your life. It's as simple as that. Believing that Jesus came to die for your sin, that he was, he was crucified, that he was raised on the third day. That's all it takes to believe that. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you will be saved. That's just the beginning of the journey, the way to peace. And if that's you right now, I want you to say alongside everybody else in here, just say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Say, I thank you for Jesus. Say, I thank you that Jesus came for me. He came to die for me. I acknowledge that I've sinned against you. I've fallen short of your glory. Please forgive me for all my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died and was raised on the third day. I believe and I accept Jesus into my life as my Lord and as my Savior. I thank you in Jesus' name. If you made that decision, it's a powerful decision. It's the beginning of a journey with Jesus. Now, I want to encourage you, if you did make that decision in here, I want to encourage you to come to the front afterwards. Make yourself known. We want to give you some literature. We want to just meet with you and talk to you about this eternal decision that you have made. If you're online and you've, you've heard this and you, you want to reach out to us, please, by all means, go to, just contact us by phone. We'll be happy to talk with you. Leave a message if nobody is in, but we will get in touch with you. You've made a significant decision that will affect you throughout eternity. Amen. Do you get